All right, hello and welcome to 8.4 lesson one, part one. So in this uh, section, we are going to multiply and divide rational expressions. All right, uh, that's a big picture objective, but for today's lesson, we're mostly just gonna be simplifying rational expressions. All right, um, so just a reminder of what a rational expression is. It's just a ratio of two polynomials, right? It's kind of giant fractions, right? So honestly, you know, what, what we're doing today is we're simplifying these, which is really similar to how we simplify fractions. Um, the process might look a little different, but basically, you know, if you simplify 10 fifths, you could simplify that to two over one. And all that's different for today is the way we're gonna simplify is we're gonna break apart, factor apart, the numerator and denominator. So in this case, the numerator factors to two times 10, and then we're gonna cancel out common factors to simplify. All right, so it's a little bit different than maybe how we did it with fraction, but the idea is the same, that you you break it apart, or sorry, that you just simplify it down to a, in a simplified version of what you started with. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do, and here are some, some basic examples. Um, and again, you can try and pause and like this first one, maybe you can do it that like not reduce it necessarily, but how would you factor it and then cancel it? Okay, so hopefully you realize that 27 is really three times nine and 18 is two times nine. And that's useful because now they both have a times nine, right? So that fraction reduces to, if you cancel out the times nine, reduces to three over two. So a simplified version of 27, 18 is three halves. Okay, so we can do a similar thing here where the five doesn't break in, it's already prime, doesn't break into any two numbers besides five and one. And x cubed looks like that, and y looks like that. Okay, and then on the bottom, this 15, I'm going to break to five times three because the fives will cancel. We have a single x, and then y cubed looks like this. Okay, and now it's kind of the fun part. You just knock out anything that's common. So here's the pair times five. Zoop. X cancels, and then one pair of Y's cancel. All right, and so what you're left with, then a reduced version is X times X on the top, X squared. On the bottom, we have a three and a Y times Y, Y squared. Okay, so that's our process. Factor it and, and break it apart. All that's really tricky is how do you factor because it's, it's different each time. So um, the factor on this one looks quite a bit different than the factor on this next one. Okay, so on this next one, um, on the top we have a GCF. So they're both divisible by three and they both have a C. So we're gonna take out a three C. Leaves us with two times C and then plus three. And then in the bottom, three times C is really just kind of already broke apart. So now that we have this split apart, now it's the fun thing, is we have three things multiplied together up top, and these two things cancel out, right? So those are gone, and now we have uh, just 2c plus 3 over 1. All that's left in the bottom there is just 1. Okay, so this uh, next case is is really a tricky case because it's tempting for kids to want to like just cancel out these x squareds, right? But the way this works is you have to factor it first and then cancel, all right? And if you don't do that, you will get um, things that are all messed up. So if I took a statement like, let's just say I had 12 over 12 minus four, I'm trying to make it look like this statement over here, right? Clearly this is equal to 12 over eight, which is, what is that, three halves, right? But if we were to try it an alternate way where we just canceled out the 12, we would get something way different. So if we cancel them out, we'd have one and one, and then we'd have one over negative three, which is not at all equal to 12 over eight. Okay, so basically canceling these x squared is illegal math, and the math police will come give you a ticket if you do something like that. Okay, what we wanna do is factor, and then see if we have anything common in our list. So in the top here, it just factors to x times x, and then the bottom, this is the square minus square. So x plus two, x minus two. This is our mad factoring skills we need here. Okay, and so 
now they don't, an x plus 2 is not the same thing as an x, and an x minus 2 is not the same thing as x. So basically, this one does not simplify. So I ran out of space there, but administrate does not simplify. Okay, and that will happen sometimes, so this is as simple as it gets already. Does not simplify. Okay, getting on to a slightly more complex example here. Um, and again, our steps are we just want to factor it and then cancel out anything that's common. So again, we don't want to cancel the x squared right away. We need to factor these. And this is where we need all those lessons on factoring because hopefully it'll pay dividends now. All right, so the bottom. Again, it, it doesn't look like it, but it is square minus square because 1 is a perfect square. So that just factors to x plus 1 and x minus 1. All right, and then up top is the deal where it's a trinomial that starts with x squared. So we're going to put x in x to make the x squared. And then the back two numbers have to multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 5. So we could make our list. Okay, and we know we're going to need one positive and one negative. And so if we make negative 6, positive 1, that'll add up to the middle minus 5. So up top, we have an x plus 1 and an x minus 6. So basically, this thing is equal to that thing, just split apart, factored apart. And now we take out our wrecking ball and say anything that's common, zoom, zoom, cancel it out. Okay, and what we're left with is x minus 6 over x minus 1. And that's a simplified version of what we started with. As far as restriction on the variable, I'm going to make a second video talking about that. Um, it's not the primary part of this lesson, so I'm just going to make a secondary one that, that goes over that. The main thing here is that you know how to simplify, right? And then the second video will go over the restrictions real quick. All right, so definitely pause and try this one, right? Give it a shot, um, and then unpause the video and check your answer with what I have. All right, so to simplify, we want to factor and then cancel. So we're not going to cancel out these x squared because they're not factored yet. And both of these are the trinomial case, so they're going to split into binomials, both the top and bottom. And then we try and cancel stuff out. I should mention I'd always look for a GCF first, right? which neither of these have a GCF, so we don't have to worry about that here, but at least check for that. And then the top one, we're going to do x and x, and then they multiply up to 10 and add up to 7. So hopefully we get 2 and 5. Everything's positive up there, so that makes it somewhat easier. Okay, and in the bottom we have negative 10. Okay, and that means we need one positive and one negative number. So we're going to have x minus something and x plus something. Okay, and the negative one has to be 3 bigger because it has to add up to negative 3. So it looks like 5 and 2 will work as long as the 5 is negative and the 2 is positive. Okay, so now we come with our wrecking ball and say, well, the x minus 2s, x, sorry, x plus 2s cancel. So boom, those are gone. And then these are close, but they're not the same. 5 more than x is not the same thing as 5 less than x. So those don't cancel. So our answer here is x plus 5 over x minus 5. Okay. And again, the second video will talk about restrictions, but this is our simplified version of that rational expression, right? And that's our goal today, is to simplify those. Okay, so this one's kind of a tricky one. Um, so take a second, see if you can at least factor the bottom, right? And hopefully you get that that's x plus six and x minus six, that's the square minus square case. And then what's tricky is that's really close to matching this factor on the top, but not quite. Right, if you look, both of these cases, the x is positive, and here the x is negative. Right? But we can actually do some manipulations. I'm going to do this down off on the side. That'll allow it to match. So the first thing is write it in standard form, right, which is what we did in, uh, when we did our factoring lessons. And then if we look at it now, since this is negative in front of the x, I can pull that out. Right? Anytime that's negative, your first term is negative there you probably want to pull negative 1 to the front, and that'll reverse the signs. And now we have matching x minus 6. It's 
Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the numerator in that factored form. I had to do a little bit of work, but I got to factor it out. Right, and now, oh, now the x minus 6 matches. So they cancel, and our simplified version has negative 1 on the top, and then x plus 6 in the denominator. Okay, so that's a tricky one where if it's not in standard form, write it in standard form first, and then if the first term is negative, pull out a negative 1. Um, and you end up with kind of different looking answers. And um, yeah, so that's just one thing to watch out for in this lesson. All right, so I called Mr. Pars up the other day and he, he had a challenge question for us and he said, if you're able to solve this and write it on the inside cover of an iPhone 8 box, not 9, not 7, 8, and mail it to him, uh, he will draw one correct solution from all the ones he receives and hand out a prize of $11.38. So uh, pause the video, give this a shot, uh, and then I'll go through through it with you. All right, so really what this is, and like we talked about before, that the hard part of this lesson chapter is factoring, right? The cancel part is easy. It's being able to factor all these things. Okay, and so these, this question has some weird factoring or some harder factoring. Um, one is that the bottom actually has a GCF. So we can start by pulling that out, pull out the 2. Okay, and then up top, again, I want to write it in standard form first. So I'm going to rewrite the order. Okay, and then we just keep factoring from there. So now the numerator, um, I'm going to pull out an x, but I'm definitely going to do negative x because the first term is negative. So I'm going to bring that out, and that will reverse both the signs. Right, if we divide these by negative 1 and pull out an x, it'll look like that. And then the denominator, I still have the 2. But the uh, this trinomial will factor like we've done all the time, where it multiplies to negative 45 and adds up to 4. So hopefully you've had a chance to try and figure this out. But I think 9 and 5 will work as long as the 5 is negative, the 9 is positive. So this part right here will factor to x plus 9 and x minus 5. Okay, and now the exciting part. Again, that's really the hard part to me is the factoring. Now that we've got a factor to part, oh yeah, boom, boom, those cancel out. No, I didn't turn black. Boom, boom, right? And then nothing else cancels. So our final answer here is a negative x over 2x plus 9. Okay, and it's tempting to want to distribute the 2 in the bottom there, and if you want to do that, you certainly can. I often leave my answers in factored form like this, just in case I miss something, and right? I would hopefully see it here and then cancel it out. Um, so I'd normally I leave it in factored form, but if you wanted to multiply it out, that would also be correct. All right, I believe that's it. Um, oh, just a preview of what we're going to do next. Next, we're going to multiply... Um, and divide rational expressions, but it's it's really the same idea. You're going to factor and cancel stuff. So if you can get this lesson, the next couple of lessons on multiplying, dividing, actually next lesson, sorry, um, 8.4, day 2, will be on multiplying and dividing. Okay, and that's it. Um, tomorrow you'll have the lesson. Today there is another video about restrictions, um, kind of like the minor part of today's lesson. Uh, and just a note, too, that... Uh, yeah, tomorrow is the assignment, the official assignment for this section. And then also, if you have any complaints, uh, here's an email address. All right, hope you are all doing well.